Hey everybody, welcome to the fourth video of the particle system series. So let's get uh, right into it. This is the patch as we left it last time. As you can see, the particles are all going crazy around the target that we set for them. We can modify the attraction strength, we can even make it negative so the particles get actually repelled from the target. So if we take a look inside our JIT gen, we can see that we created the uh, this little algorithm that we talked about last time, uh, we can choose if to dump the velocity from the previous frame in this current frame. This is, could be some kind of friction simulation. So if we simulate a bit of friction, it means that the particles uh, uh, slow down at each frame instead of uh, just summing the, the current uh, velocity with the previous velocity. So we can have uh, different behaviors according to how much friction we apply to the particles. Pretty cool. And so this is how we left the patch. Now, in this video, I would like to implement uh, some kind of emitter system. What does it mean? That the particles have a lifetime, and when the lifetime is over, they basically um, reappear at the place where the emitter is. For example, the emitter could be our little sphere that goes around in the world. This could be the place where the particles are emitted. Or we can just create a fixed point and consider this our emitter. We can create more points to, uh, to be the emitters. And this is where our particles will um, come up every time uh, they die. So every time the lifetime is over. So what do we need for that? Basically, we need another input here inside our JIT gen. So let's create another input, input3, let's give it a comment. This is going to be our lifetime. So this is going to be, of course, the previous lifetime. And then let's create an output, out3, and this is going to be our new lifetime. So lifetime is going just to be a single um, a single value because it's just going to be a scalar, so a single number because it represents the time that is still left to live for the particles before they appear in the emitter position. So we can just switch the single number because even if this will be a one-plane matrix, you know that this um, matrix that comes inside is a three-planes matrix. So basically our GCN would always uh, consider this as a three vector input, so we always need to switch uh, one of the components for that. We could switch whatever because we are just going to fill this with the values uh, for the lifetime, but uh, so we can just switch the x value. So once inside here we can just subtract, for example, a small quantity to this number and send it out into the output. So basically, at every frame, the lifetime of the particles is going to be reduced of that amount. And actually, what we want to do is to use the modulo object, because we want that when these matrices go uh, below zero, they will basically come up back to the number one. So once the life is reduced to zero, they will actually come back up and uh, be filled with the number one. So let's see if this actually works. So what we need to do, what we need to do here is to create another JIT matrix uh, with one plane, uh, let's just call it uh, lifetime. And then we are going to fill it uh, with some random values exactly. So let's connect this here to the input tree. So we make a bit of space, there's no need to, to be so sparing the space. We actually got a lot of spaces for free. Cool. So, lifetime is here. Uh, let's fill it with a single JIT noise, uh, with a single plane JIT noise. So they will all start with a different lifetime, right? And then the lifetime will be reduced um, at every frame. So let's connect this another load bang also here. Let's actually bang it. Okay, cool. So now we got our lifetime. Let's create another matrix with the same name because we need to create this feedback system that we saw in the first video. And uh, let's see if it's actually working. So let's connect this here. And uh, let's see. So if we fill this, uh, oh, of course we need to actually bang this matrix at every frame. So let's do it. 
let's connect the FPS GUI here, let's connect these to the lifetime matrix. And nice, we can see that they go to zero, but they don't go back to one because the module object is just is not actually the best for the job. So let's actually say wrap zero to one. Because uh, the modulo object, I think it doesn't work for negative numbers. I kind of was unsure about this, but yeah, that seems to be the case. So cool, when they go um, to zero, then they come back uh, at one. We can make this process a bit slower by simply reducing this number. So cool, so some uh, the cells of the part of the matrix will go to zero and then go back to one. We can observe this also connecting, for example, a JIT cell block and see what happens to these numbers. So this goes to zero and I should go, go, should go back up to one. And in fact, this is what happens very well. Cool, so now we got our, list, our little system of feedback uh, for the lifetime of the particles. Cool, so uh, what do we need to do now is simply to say, okay, if this is uh, great, uh, less or equal to uh, zero, then uh, let's do like this. Let's this this looks a lot like the meter particle system video that I've got, uh, basically the same thing. So we are going to do it in a pretty similar way. We are going to send a value which is called is dead. So if the particle is dead, so if this condition is true, which means the particle is actually over, the lifetime of the particle is actually over, then let's receive this here then instead of appearing uh, from the previous position uh, we can actually so let's create a um, selector operator so if this is true so if this is false just go on your uh, just appear in the previous position in case this is false so as you can see they are already starting to up, uh, appear from the center because by default this will be a value of zero 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 but we can also say, in case this is false, just appear from the target position. So let's get actually the parameter target here. And let's do like this. So in case the particle is dead, it will appear at the target position and then also be attracted itself from the target. So maybe it's not super, it's not super um, cool as a behavior, so maybe we can do something like that. We can create another parameter, call it emitter. Let's position it at the position 0, 1, 0. Cool. And uh, yeah, you know what? We should actually also set an initial velocity for when the particles are appearing again. So not actually using the previous velocity, but setting a new one, so when the particle is respawned, then it doesn't have the previous velocity, but has kind of a velocity uh, initialized. So in order to do that, we can simply, let's move a bit of this stuff on the right, cool. So in order to do that, we can simply use the same system and say, okay, instead of using the, the previous velocity and then uh, friction and so on, connect it here, so in case this is false, okay, use that. Uh, in case this is not false, then we can, for example, give it an initial random value. So we can use, for example, the noise object, which will produce um, will produce a single random number, or actually will produce as many random numbers as there are planes in the matrix, I believe. So let it, let's actually scale it this uh, from zero to one, between minus one and one. And then let's actually multiply this by something small. So our initial velocity is going to be small. Let's connect this here. And let's see what we get. Okay, I think the attraction to the object is still uh, too big. Okay, uh, so we actually don't see the initial random velocity. So let's actually reduce a bit the uh, attraction to the target. Something like that. Okay, cool. So our particles will respond with an initial random velocity. Let's make it a bit greater. Okay, cool. Nice. So they basically spawn at this point, and then they are attracted uh, from the from the object. Let's actually diminish a bit the, the friction, make it a bit more uh, frictionary. So yeah, they don't go too much around, but they will follow the object pretty nicely. Let's maybe increase the maximum velocity to 0 0.1. Uh, 
Uh, let's make the friction 1992. So it's a lot about playing uh, with the uh, parameters, as you can see, in order to obtain the result we like the most. But uh, the concept is pretty much there. So we can also move our emitter around using, for example, a um, parameter here from the patch. So we can create a pack, call it emitter. It's going to be our emitter position. It's going to be easier. We need three floats for the position in X, Y, and Z. And uh, we can then move it around, for example. Yeah, this could be. This is our emitter moving around. Let me actually reset the camera. Cool. So, where is our emitter? There he is. So, cool. If we want the particles to have a shortest life, which means more of them are going to appear at the emitter position, then we can uh, actually increase this number here, which represents how much life is drained at every frame. Cool. So, in this case, uh, the particles have a shorter life very nice it's a bit too short let's maybe say three okay something like that yeah as you can see our emitter is moving around and releasing particles all the time which is pretty nice so another thing that we can actually do is to assign the color uh, of the particles according to actually their lifetime so we can create another output here Output for comment color, and we can say, for example, we can mix the color of the particles. So let's create a mix object. We're going to use exactly the the value of the previous lifetime. So let's do something like this as a mix, as a mix uh, value, and then we can create a couple of vectors for the colors. So for example, they could be white when they just started their life. And then they could be, oops, this is actually, okay, so when this value is 1, and then they could be actually black when they are dying. So we can connect this here. Then we have to connect this output to the color input of the, of the mesh. So let's see. So cool. So when the particles die, uh, they will become black. We can make them actually disappear in the background by giving them the same color as the background which is 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, so suck, suck, suck. Nice, so they're basically disappearing into the background. You can be much more creative with this, uh, but uh, since this is just uh, an introduction on this concept, we will leave it at that for the moment. Uh, let's actually increase the number of particles, we can go much more than that. So let's actually change the dimensions of all these matrix, these three matrices to 10,000. So let's initialize those matrices, cool. And uh, there we are. There we go with 10,000 particles. So the best thing will be actually to use the value of the lifetime as the alpha value for the particles in order to make them disappear. But uh, we cannot do that directly because we just have... Uh, a three plane matrix coming inside so we should actually like uh, attach this value to a matrix uh, so we should actually create uh, another color matrix here and use this as the alpha value which uh, we can actually do that probably going to be cooler so let's actually do that so let's create a jit pack like this so jump with two input, jump three from the first input and one from the second input, cool. So let's create a JIT matrix uh, uh, filled with uh, ones. So this is the same dimensions, cool. So let's give it uh, uh, initial values of one. So let's create a message set all one and then a bang. And this is going to appear up and at initialization of the patch cool this goes in the color array nice and then we are going to simply so this becomes now zero 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 so we're going to use simply that as the as the alpha value for the color so let's go in the fourth value here cool um nice and the thing is that we need to bang this matrix as well. 
every frame so we can do something like this first we send the matrix inside the alpha channel then we actually bang uh, then we actually bang this matrix and settle one okay cool now we have to activate the depth enable one uh, let's uh, no sorry depth enable zero blend enable one and it should be already enough because by default uh, the blend mode is alpha blend so cool as you can see they actually disappearing into nothing when their life get to a sad end cool uh cool 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 this is pretty nice we can increase a bit the initial random velocity by changing this number here cool so they create a little explosion of um, particles all around we could also change the point size of the particles but this we are going to see when actually the point size uh, thing will be available for everybody so yeah let me mention this once again this point mode circle that is not available at the moment for everybody it will be available uh, soon enough when the guys are cycling uh, um, will release the update which is soon to come i believe so cool so we created our little emitter for the particle system pretty nice pretty nice i am pretty happy with the result of this tutorial so we are going to close it here as always if you like the video you can put a like on it uh, follow the channel and uh, visit my patreon if you wish to get some more patches and support the creation of these videos so thank you very much for following and uh, see you soon with some cooler particle stuff Soon enough we are going to implement these things using the transform feedback uh, system implemented with the GL3 package. This will be really funny, so yeah, don't miss those out when they come out, and uh, see you soon. Ciao!